Boker Tov. Good morning. It's nice to see people virtually finding, filing in as we do uh, in order to be together on this lovely gift of a Thursday morning. It's amazing. Each day brings its own gifts, challenges, excitements, confusions, wonders, but hopefully we can feel and receive the gifts when they're offered to us um, and see them for what they are. I hope that uh, people are feeling rested. Uh, rested is not my best thing in the last couple of days, but I'm actually doing okay. And uh, looking forward to our opportunity this morning in just a few seconds to say to one another, as people are in the chat, which I value as well, saying Boker Tov. Uh, just an opportunity to connect with each other. And so uh, let's do that. Okay, Tov. Uh, welcome to Temple Sinai's daily Sinai streams offering, our opportunity each day to connect, to reflect, and to remember. Wow, it feels good to be here this morning and to have the opportunity to allow some traditional words to uh, challenge us, inspire us, be present to us, uh, so that we can hopefully be more present throughout our day today. This prayer gives thanks for the way in which our bodies actually work. Um, and so let's join in the translation of these words together. Blessed eternal God, creator of the universe, you have fashioned our bodies with wisdom, creating within us a finely balanced network. To stand before you in prayer is itself a fragile miracle. Eternal God, we praise you as the healer of body and spirit. The body and spirit truly are one. Uh, they go together in a miraculous way. How is it that the physical body and the ethereal soul can in fact be connected to one another? Uh, is something that is truly a wonder. And so let's join together in these words. The soul that you have given me, O oh God, is a pure one. You have created and formed it breathe it into me and within me you sustain it. So long as my soul is within me, I will give thanks to you, eternal my God and God of my ancestors, source of all creation, sovereign of all souls. We praise you, eternal God, in whose hand is the power of all life and the spirit of all flesh. So let's join together now in the blessing for Torah study in Hebrew. Again, feel free to follow in the English or uh, to read through the comment on the side of the page as we join together. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו וציוונו לעסוק בדברי תורה. ערב נא אדוני אלוהינו את דברי תורתך בפינו ובפי עמך בית ישראל, ונהיה אנחנו וצאצאינו וצאצאי עמך בית ישראל, כולנו יודעי שמך ולומדי תורתך לשמה. ברוך אתה אדוני המלמד תורה לעמו ישראל. It is interesting to read about the Torah being befinu in our mouth, uvefi amcha bet Yisrael, and in the mouth of the people of Israel, but it's a single peh, a single mouth that's mentioned there. I was reminded in a meeting uh, that I was in just yesterday, actually two days ago on Tuesday, uh, with some of the leadership of our Israeli movement, that uh, the way in which uh, we say in Hebrew, uh, something is unanimous is peh echad, right, with one mouth. Um, and so it is a reminder that part of the role of Torah is to have a multiplicity of facets, of interpretations, of meanings, and yet also as something that unifies us, to have one tradition and one written Torah around which to wrestle and agree and disagree and create uh, the most meaningful possible questions as well as whatever answers we may have. So we turn to some Torah study, and uh, these words seem especially relevant today. These are the obligations whose value cannot be measured. They nourish us in this world and help us to create the world to come. To honor fathers and mothers. To perform acts of love and kindness. To attend the house of study morning and evening. Bachnasat Ochim, to welcome the stranger, will be Kulcholim, to visit the sick. Bachnasat Kala, to provide for brides and grooms. 
Ulevayat Hamet, to keep faith with the dead, Viyund Fila, to pray with sincerity, Baba'at Shalom Ben Adam Lachavero, to make peace when there is strife, the Talmud Torah Kenegid Kulam. And the study of Torah is equal to them all. And now let's turn to the words of Shema. These words that are with us at all these different moments in our lives. Every day is a different moment, and yet so many times I've had the, the bittersweet mitzvah, the uh, sacred obligation of standing with families who've just uh, said goodbye to someone at the end of their life, just experienced a death, and to recite these words. Uh, these words that are in addition to an affirmation, a pledge of continuity, uh, that we use these words to say to one another and to those who came before us, uh, we are here and we, we are carrying on for you, for the values and the teachings that you shared with us. In that spirit, let's join together in the words of Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Ba'ed, Ve'ahavta Et Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Levavecha, Bechol Nafshecha, Bechol Meodecha, Ve'ayu Advarim Ha'ele, Asher Anochim Etzavcha Hayom Al Levavecha, Veshin Antam Levanecha, Vedibarta Bam, Veshivtecha Bevetecha, Uvelechtecha Vederech, Uvshoch Pacha Uvkumecha, וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך, ובשעריך. ויאמר אדוני אל משה לאמור, דבר אל בני ישראל, ואמרת עליהם, ויעשו להם ציצית על כנפי בגדיהם לדורותם, ונתנו על ציצית הכנף בתיר תכלת, והיה לכם לציצית, וראיתם אותו. וזכרתם את כל מצוות אדוני, ועשיתם אותם. ולא תטו אחרי לבבכם, ואחרי עיניכם, אשר אתם זונים אחריהם. למען תזכרו, ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, ואיתם קדושים אלוהיכם. אני, אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים, אני, אדוני אלוהיכם. אדוני אלוהיכם, אמן. Well, as we join in these words, we now prepare to uh, continue to find our focus for this week. Um, that uh, this is a, a focus that uh, on a Thursday has two parts. And the one part, we want to continue to allow the words of Sefer Cheshbon uh, HaNefesh to continue to guide us. Um, and at the same time, we then want to uh, hear and experience words from our parasha this week. So uh, let's take a moment and let's uh, affirm together the two characteristics, two midot personality qualities or characteristics of the 13 identified by Rabbi Menachem Mendel Levine of Sethenov um, uh, that we happen to be focusing on this week, even though all of them are a good and meaningful focus. Neatness, let there be no confusion or ugliness in your things or your room let alone about your body or clothes. Balance, ease. Sages choose their words and actions carefully so that they are not called evil for doing good. I would point out in regard to balance or ease that the original word that's being translated, uh, which is an Aramaic form, is nichuta. Uh, nichuta, if you can hear, nachat is uh, the Hebrew equivalent. Nachat, pronounced in English way, is nachas. And of course, naches being the word we use for shepping naches, for having those good and wonderful feelings uh, about good events. Um, it's not, it's also a sense of ease that hopefully when uh, we hear good things or we have good moments, we can relax into them and find the kind of peace and steadiness that we deserve in our lives. Well, this. This week is a double parasha, Parashat Nitzavim Vayelech. Um, and uh, we talked a little bit about uh, Nitzavim and uh, uh, last 
on Monday, that is. So today here we are Thursday, and I want to talk a little bit about Parashat Vayelech. And uh, this parasha um, is the shortest in all the Torah, which is in its own way the least important aspect of it. Uh, but the word, uh, even though it doesn't get as much attention attached to Vayelech, um, the word with which it begins, I think, is significant and worthy of our attention this morning. Um, here, let's uh, have a look at the beginning of it. It's chapter 31 of the Book of Devarim, the Book of Deuteronomy. And uh, it's very much coming to the end of Torah. It says, Moses went and spoke these things to all Israel. Uh, he said to them, I am now 120 years old. I can no longer be active. Moreover, the Eternal has said to me, you shall not go across this Jordan. Uh, the Eternal God uh, directly will cross over before you. God directly will wipe out those nations from your path, and Joshua will be the one who will stand in my place as Moses. At the beginning of this parsha, Vayelech, it starts by saying, Moses went. Where did he go? Uh, from the previous chapter, there is in fact no sense of going. Here's the last verse um, of the last two verses of the previous one, where it just says, I call upon you to choose life uh, by loving the eternal God and doing the commandments, and therefore you shall have life and, uh, and long endure in the land that God promised to your ancestors. So what it's asked, is this going? Where did Moses go? Um, and I think there are two very, uh, two answers that I'm aware of to this particular question that I want to share with you this morning. One of them um, is uh, something that I feel like used to be unique to Moses. Uh, Moses, among other things, was different because he knew the date of his death. Um, he knew when it was that his life would come to an end, that he would live exactly 120 years, his day of birth and death traditionally on the seventh day of the month of Adar. Um, and uh, Avram Ibn Ezra of the uh, golden age of Spain, uh, when he comments on Vayelach, he says, where did he go? He went, he says, Ibn Ezra, to each tribe to tell them that he was about to die so that they would not be afraid and to strengthen their spirits. Um, and that's why it talks about Joshua afterward as well. So imagine that Moses, uh, again, being physically vigorous, so say the words, and yet um, he can't continue to go on and do exactly as he has done. I can't continue to go out and come in. Um, there's a time for transition, and that time was at that moment. Uh, and so Moses himself imagines Ibn Ezra went to each tribe individually and said to them, this is what's happening. Uh, like I said, it used to be uniquely Moses. There have been uh, a number of members of Temple who have uh, died with medical assistance even during this last six months. And during that time, to see them speak to their families, um, to uh, see them, in fact, do what Ibn Ezra is talking about in some cases, uh, not only to choose what's right for them, but actually to take the time to speak and share with their families um, is something that I really didn't think about or imagine when this new possibility in Canada came through. It's something that I affirm the importance of as an option, not that I urge people to do or urge them not to do. Uh, but there have certainly been sacred moments as a result that would not have happened otherwise, uh, where I've witnessed people uh, able to do what Moses is described as doing, as to strengthen the spirit of those around them during an incredibly difficult time. Uh, well, that's the uh, part of the interpretation of Ibn Ezra. Uh, Rabbeinu Bachia um, compares Torah in this going um, to food and drink, which is actually a, a common comparison made in the written tradition, uh, especially in the wisdom writings, like in the book of Proverbs. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, most of us do not hesitate, uh, do not wait for food to come to us, don't wait for nourishment to come, but we go out and we seek it. We're aware that this is one of our most basic needs. 
and that in order to experience that reality, in order to experience, uh, in order to take good care of ourselves, we have to go out and we need to get it. Um, it's true of food and drink. It's true of what sustains the physical body. And uh, Rabbi Nubachia reminds us in the sense of Vayela, why is it uh, that uh, Moses went at this point? He was modeling that at all moments of our life, we need to go and seek out the kind of wisdom, the kind of loving interaction, uh, the kind of uh, connection and commitment that make our life a meaningful life. That in fact, the act of learning and growing every day is something that even when Moses is saying this is the end of his life, what is he doing? Um, according to Rabbeinu Bachia, he's modeling that even on what he knows is his last day, he wants to learn something new. He says, wow, I need to grow as a human, um, even every day that I'm here. And I hope in that spirit uh, in general, but especially during the month of Elul, we can be inspired by that imagining of Moses moment to say, uh, today might seem like a day where it's too busy, there's too much. Uh, too many things. I can't possibly gain a new insight, challenge myself to grow in a new way, to be a little different, um, to see myself in a new light. And I hope that today, especially as we get closer and closer to Yamim Nolaim, uh, Rosh Hashanah coming a week from tomorrow night, uh, that we're able and willing to always be growing and learning people. As our founding rabbi, uh, Rabbi Jordan Perlson, I love Shalom, used to say it so beautifully, uh, it's not a Jewish goal to be learned, it's a Jewish goal to be learning. That uh, it, it's not about seeking rank or academic achievement. Those things are valued, but are not what essentially what life is about. Life is about our willingness, our readiness, uh, to go ahead and to live and to learn and to experience. And uh, I hope our parasha can lead us in that direction as uh, we take the time uh, to do a bit of that just now. Um, and likewise, so that now hopefully uh, we can uh, remind ourselves as a kind of learning about our sense of interdependence with others. Here we are getting uh, in the first number of days as schools open and as uh, public schools are opening more and more. Uh, we really pray for all of those who uh, need to find within, we need to each find within ourselves the kind of strength and the kind of discipline to continue to act in a way that allows us to be out and to have some of our interpersonal needs met even while we also meet our safety and health needs as well. And so we're grateful to all those who help us do that. And we are also bringing to mind all those in our community uh, who are in need of strength and healing and who give strength to us, especially those whose names are being added to the chat and those who I hold in my heart who are on our Temple Sinai Mishabarach list as we turn to these words of Refua. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless and heal all who suffer. May it be the divine will to provide healing and strength. Reveal to us the holiness of life, the wholeness of shalom, and together we say, Amen. And so with uh, awareness and sadness, we turn from this moment to connect and reflect to this moment to remember. We now recall the loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at this season in years past, and those whom we have taken into our hearts with our own. During the period of Shloshim, the past 30 days, we extend our condolences to the families of Alan Dubras, Ann Shannon, Aaron Pizel, Joan Dubras, and we remember all victims of terror and violence, including Rabbi Shai Ochayon. And it is our very sad duty to report the death of our member, Lisa Hirsch Wax, uh, wife of Matthew Wax, mother of Jacob and Ava Wax, sister of Dana, 
daughter of David and Donna Hirsch. May her memory be a blessing. Funeral arrangements are being made through Benjamins. On your site, on the anniversaries of their deaths, on this 21st day of the month of Elul, uh, we remember and honor the legacies of Anne Atlin, Shimon Baker, Harry Berman, Jacob Billet, Kenny Mervyn Emsig, Esther Gertler, Mina Gould, Toba Lipman, Sarah Pernica, Felicia Rain, Henry Rittersporn, Jacob Roskin. Zichonam Levracha, may their memories be a blessing to us. Our griefs and our sympathies are mingled as we turn together to words sanctified by memory, words glorified by hope in the Kaddish Yatom. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemer abba, ve'alma divra chilute ve'amlich malchute, v'chayechon v'yomechon, v'chaye d'chol be' Yisrael, v'agala v'izman kari v'imru, amen. Yehe shme rabba m'varach v'alam ul'alme almaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase. Vid hadal, vid ale, vid halal, she made a kudsha bolechu. La ela min kol birchata ve shirata, tu shvachata ve nechemata, da miran be alma ve mu, amen. Yehesh lama rabba min shmaya ve chaim, alene ve al kol yisrael ve mu, amen. O se shalom be mumav, huya se shalom, alene ve al kol yisrael ve mu, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and bring comfort to all those among us who are saddened and grieving and bring strength to those who remember and together we say, Amen. And uh, now uh, in a moment, we prepare for our um, opportunity to hear the sound of the shofar. Um, and uh, again, it will be from uh, within uh, Toronto. It's something that was recorded earlier this summer as we prepared for today. Um, and uh, so, but first we turn to the words of Uhur Rahum that, that really very much echo the feelings of the month of Elul. And so we join with them in the traditional way. Historically, these words were read quietly and simply not sung and davened quickly. Please join with me. Gentle and merciful ruler, source of goodness and guidance, be kind to us and answer us, for we are called by your name. As you do wonders each day, create us again as a sign of your loving loyalty. Gentle and merciful one, look upon us in our time of trouble and answer us, for true strength is yours. Help us to sense your mercy and kindness, strengthen us with your goodness, source of stability, have compassion upon us where there is no other God. Eternal one, do not abandon us or be far away, for our life is too short. Save us from sorrow and trouble. You are our source of hope. Do not leave us exposed to shame, eternal our God. Let your face shine upon us. Remember the covenant with our ancestors. Strengthen us for your divine purpose. See our difficulties and hear our prayer, for you hear the prayers of all. Gentle and merciful God, have mercy upon your creation, for none is like you. You are both loving and just, patient and merciful one. Help us to recreate ourselves. Source of life, do not abandon us. Fashioner of all, do not forget us. For you, are God, are the source of kindness and mercy. Avinu malkenu chonenu vanenu kishimcha hagadol nikra alen. And so now, uh, in that spirit, we share the sounding of the shofar. Here we are. Takia. It's good. Good indeed. So many different ways in so many different places to hear sound of the shofar to awaken us. May we have an alert and a learning and a wonderful day. Fuck your tough.